Is it true that cancer cells cannot live in alkaline tissues? Yes, absolutely. That's that's true. They all cells, as a matter of fact, have an optimal pH, which is acid alkaline, and an optimal temperature at which they function. As you know, if your body is chilled down to 90 degrees, you're not going to be moving around, or 90, you know, even 93, 92. Um, when I was doing my residency, my internship, we used to have people come in from Central Park who were um, had been out and exposed, uh, you know, they'd fallen asleep. We had to heat them up before we could know if they were alive or not. We couldn't even, um, you know, you can't pronounce someone dead if they're alive so we had to actually heat them up so there's a bottom number and a bottom temperature and an upper temperature and the same with alkaline and and acid and our body functions best at 7.4 and when you get up to 7.5 or 6 yeah cancer cells just can't do their thing because they are part of their whole metabolic requirement is uh, acid production and if they're if they, they can't produce those acids in an alkaline environment they just can't. So it'd be kind of like, you know, did you ever try to stick your head out of the window while the car is going 60 miles an hour with your face facing towards your, com- or, you know, the direction you're driving into and breathe? You can't breathe. You, you, you know, you start, uh, you have to turn your head to the side. Okay, it's like too much air. Well, it's the same thing with the alkalinity. The cancer cell just can't can't function. So yeah, that's absolutely true. And then the, the whole trick is how do you do that? How do you make the cancer cell, how do you make all the cells in your body alkaline? And that's something we need to go in. And again, that's another whole discussion. So they say in the second part of the question, if we ingest mostly alkaline food, will that prevent cancer? You hear this all the time. Right. Again, and and, and it will, but we got to remember the, the, the things that will produce an acid environment. We were just talking a moment ago about about emotions. Remember, emotions can cause uh, adrenaline, uh, which is epinephrine. It can cause that that, uh, cortisol. It can change our biochemistry. We can start burning too much glucose uh, and produce acid. So it's more than just food. But yes, here's the other other view of that too, a different perspective, is that the more food that you eat that is alkaline, alkalinizing, the better of a mood you'll be in, the less likely you are to get upset, the more compassionate you'll be, the more understanding you'll be, the more clear you'll be. You're not going to get mad at someone for cutting you off in traffic. You'll bless them and you'll say, you know, you need it more than me. Please go ahead of me. You know, whereas if your body's acidic and a fly comes in the room, you're going to scream at the fly and chase it and yell and get all upset, you know. So yeah, it's, it works. Our emotions affect um, our, our uh, pH and our pH affects it. But, yeah, the, the first thing you can do with your health is address that which you can see, and that which you can see is your body. It's hard to see your emotions. It's hard to see your mind, hard to see your spirit, but you can see your body. So let's start with the body. Feed it alkaline food. Clean out the colon. Make sure it is, you get the pH up. But just to keep in mind that there are other things that do affect the pH. So um, that is the best. I mean, that's 80% of it. It's a big deal what you eat. Mm-hmm.